Alterac Valley, or AV as it's sometimes referred to, is one of Warcraft's two epic battlegrounds. Debuting back in vanilla, AV is also one of the three original battlegrounds, along with Arathi Basin and Warsong Gulch. It pits 40 Alliance players versus 40 Horde in an attempt to drain reinforcements from the opposing faction and control the mineral-rich valley and the secluded portion of their Alterac Mountains. If you're just a casual PvPer and don't run a lot of battlegrounds, you may have found yourself here and wondered, what the hell am I doing? Hopefully this guide will help. First of all, one needs to know the general rules for the BG. After that, we'll take a look at the terrain and layout of the map, primarily noting the most important targets and do's and don'ts. Each side begins the match with 700 reinforcements. The objective to win the BG is to drain the opponent's reinforcements to zero. There are several ways to do this. 1. Capture or destroy opposing defensive positions. 2. Kill the enemy captains. The Alliance captain is Belinda Stonehearth. The Horde captain is Galvangar, also known as Galv. 3. Kill opposing players. 4. Kill the enemy general. The Alliance general is Vandar Stormpike. The Horde general is Drekthar. Yes, that Drekthar. Once an enemy general dies, the match is over, as it automatically drains enemy reinforcements to zero. Also, there are two rules that you should always adhere to in this battleground. 1. Always fight on the flag. That includes when capturing towers. Keep your force inside the room at the top of the tower where the flag is. Running outside greatly increases your chances of being knocked off or getting out of the line of sight from your healers. You may as well just give the tower back to the horde if you don't stay on the damn flag. 2. Never fight on the roads or in the open. Head to your target location and stay with your groups. First of all, I would highly recommend obtaining an add-on for Battleground Timers. Each objective in Alterac Valley, like a lot of other BGs, relies on timers for control or destruction of the target. Knowing how many seconds you have is critical if you want to maximize your success. As you'll see on the map for AV, there are three types of targets that your faction has to either capture or destroy. 1. Towers and Bunkers 2. Graveyards 3. Mines each of these helps you in different ways. Each tower, or bunker if you're the horde gunning for the alliance positions, has a flag inside it. In order to destroy these, you have to capture, or cap, this flag and then make sure an opposing faction member doesn't get it back. Once you get it, you have to wait four minutes. If you can do this, the building will be destroyed and precious reinforcements will be deducted from the opposing faction's pool. Graveyards don't add or subtract from the reinforcement pool, but they are critical in determining success. If your faction controls a graveyard, this ensures that when or if you die, you will be resurrected at it, if you're close enough to it upon death. Distance doesn't matter here, so if you're caught with your pants down at Frostwolf Keep, and the Alliance doesn't have any control of any graveyards except the one at Dunbaldar, then your happy ass will be resurrected back there. And trust me, getting all the way back down to Frostwolf Keep from Dunbaldar is not easy and can waste precious minutes when the match is on the line. Mines are not critical for a win, but they can certainly buy you a little bit of time. There are two mines on the map, Coal Tooth and Iron Deep. Controlling one of these mines will grant your faction one reinforcement every 45 seconds. If you control both mines, you'll earn two reinforcements every 45 seconds. Like I said, they're almost insignificant in today's game, but in tightly contested matches where neither side can down the other's general, those reinforcements can be the difference between defeat and victory. Now you know the basic mechanics and what everything needs. Here's how to properly run the BG and run it well. This is not a 100% guaranteed win every single time, but it'll win the vast majority of the matches, especially considering the overwhelming number of your opponents will not be as tightly organized. This particular video will be from the Alliance perspective, although due to the layout of the map, these strategies can work for the Horde as applied to their counter-Alliance targets. Alliance forces will start inside a cavern at the northern northernmost point, located here. Horde forces will begin the campaign at the southern end, located here. The main thoroughfare through the battleground runs mostly along a north-south route. For the Alliance, as you head south, your first tactical decision as a group will come right here. This is where the road splits and you will first divide your forces. 
The majority of the group will continue south and begin targeting, targeting the first two Horde towers. The smaller group, roughly 15 players, will hoof it to Stone Hearth Bunker and defend it from the Horde forces that should be arriving about 10 seconds after you get there. Stone Hearth Bunker is located here. Chances are the Horde will be sending the bulk of their forces north to start destroying the Alliance bunkers. Stone Hearth is the first one they'll encounter. You'll want a good sized group there to play defense and prevent them from destroying the bunker for as long as possible. That platoon doesn't need to hold it for the entire match, but if they can slow down the horde enough to allow the rest of your horse forces to start capturing Tower Point and I Split Tower, then your team will have earned a few minutes head start and that will determine a ton of matches. If, by some grace of a loon, you get lucky and manage to stymie the horde at Stone Hearth, then you're almost guaranteed a win. The chances of them bypassing the bunker and trying to engage Vandar Stormpike, the Alliance General, with home Stonehearth still active, increases their difficulty by tenfold. Not to mention that it will be utterly infuriating to their forces and disrupt their game plan, if they even had one. As that small group peels off, the larger group keeps riding south until they get to Iceblood Garrison, located here. The Horde Captain, Galv, is located inside, but you needn't worry about ga engaging him unless the match devolves into a reinforcement drainage war. Then, and only then, should you worry about trying to kill him. He's a raid boss and hits like a truck, so you'll need a dedicated group with heals and a solid tank to down him quickly enough. If you engage him early in the match, you'll be wasting time. Time the Horde will happily suck away from you because you can bet your last dollar they won't bother with engaging Belinda Stonehearth. After you pass Iceblood Garrison, you'll see a turn to the left. Here you'll find the flag for Iceblood Graveyard. Your next move is very important. As your group prepares to split again, five peeps need to head into Iceblood Tower, often referred to in chat as IBT, and start the capture process. Five more need to keep riding and pull the five Horde Guards away from the Iceblood Graveyard flag. As the Horde Guards give chase, capture the Graveyard. The team members that pull the guards need to then proceed into Tower Point, often referred to as TP in chat, and proceed to capture it. The horde guards will chain back, but the group that took the flag can easily eradicate them quickly. The reasoning behind capturing the graveyard first is simple. The horde may have a token force assigned to keeping the alliance from capturing either Iceblood Tower or Tower Point. If you don't have the graveyard captured, any horde member you kill will res right there and be able to run back in to continue to disrupt your attack force and defend either of the two towers. Remember, the graveyard doesn't have to be fully captured, meaning the 4 minute timer doesn't have to run its course. As long as it's in the process of being captured, or as long as that timer is running, the horde cannot res there and it buys you more time. As Tower Point and Iceblood Tower are being captured, the rest of the battle group needs to keep trucking south. The next point you'll see is the Frostwolf Graveyard flag. Do not capture this. Do not touch it. Keep riding. Everyone loves to be the one to capture something, and it's right there, tantalizingly within reach. It's beckoning you. You have to fight that urge and keep riding into Frostwolf Keep. I'll explain why in a second. As the force goes through the first gate into Frostwolf Keep, you'll need to hang a sharp right uphill, then turn left, and left again to go uphill and enter the fortress proper. As you enter, you'll see the East Frostwolf Tower on your left, and the West Frostwolf Tower on your right. One group needs to be assigned to each and begin the capture process. The remaining forces will need to keep riding through, cross the small bridge, and take the Frostwolf Relief Hut. This is the graveyard for Frostwolf Keep. This is also the reason you do not want to capture the Frostwolf Graveyard before you capture the Relief Hut. If someone captures the Frostwolf Graveyard, any Horde member playing defense within the keep will res at the Relief Hut, since it's the closest graveyard. The more you kill, the more will be able to conduct an effective turtle defense within the keep and basically be become dug in like Alabama ticks. And during the time the Frostwolf Keep graveyard is being captured, if any alliance member dies, they'll res only God knows where, whatever the closest graveyard up north is. If things have gone to shit above the halfway point on the map, that graveyard might be back in Dunbaldar. That is bad bad news and has the possibility to cost you the match. Once the relief hut has been captured fully, then you can spring a token force to capture the Frostwolf graveyard while you wait on the Frostwolf towers to be destroyed. 
This will ensure that any horde that die will be rezzed much farther away from Frostwolf Keep. One other thing to keep in mind while your forces are in Frostwolf Keep waiting on the towers to be destroyed. Make sure to prepare your defense against any horde members trying to get back inside at the gate to the keep, not on Noob Hill. What is Noob Hill, you ask? It's a small mound about 30 yards in front of the Drex Garrison door. A lot of players, for some reason, enjoy standing on the hill as if they're back in third grade and playing King of the Mountain. Don't do this. Standing there puts you at a disadvantage and a horrible position to oppose any horde coming in. You need to place your defenses at the gate, which is at the top of a road coming into the keep. It's a perfect choke point and defensible position. Stay off of Noob Hill. Fight at the gate. If everything has gone according to plan, the BG map should look something like this. All four Horde Towers should be in the capture process, with Tower Point and Ice Blood Tower nearly destroyed. Remember, your Battleground Timer add-on will give you the exact times for each tower or bunker, graveyard, and the percentage, health percentage for the generals. It is imperative that you wait at least for three or four of the towers to be destroyed before you engage Drek'thar. It's also wise to make sure that you have captured the Frostwolf Relief Hut. With it captured, it's a very short run back to Drek if you die during his fight. If you try to engage Drek'thar with towers still functional, he will be accompanied by a War Master for each corresponding tower left standing. Each one alive gives him a health and damage buff that will wreck any tank's day. He'll one-shot anything in, pl in plate and probably one-shot those that are that just for good measure. With Tower Point, Ice Blood Tower, and both Frostwolf Towers destroyed, you'll only have to worry with Drek'thar himself. Granted, he's a 40-man raid boss, so it will still take a few moments to kill him. You'll also want to keep an eye on any random horde players recapturing the graveyard and or getting back into the room when you're fighting Drek. Fears, knockbacks, and other fun AoEs can make killing Drek a pain in the ass, or worse, resetting him and wiping the raid and having to start all over. That's right, if he steps foot out of his main room, his health goes back to 100%, so he, be sure to have the tanks keep him as far back and in the middle of his room as possible. Once Drek dies, the battle is over and the win is yours. AV is my favorite battleground, and even in its diminished state from its original incarnation back in vanilla, it's still a hell of a good time. As with any BG or any PvP activity, communication is absolutely vital. Ironclad, foolproof plans aren't necessary as you'll face way more groups that are just as unprepared as you were before you watch this video. Thanks again for watching. Please offer any comments or questions below, and please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Everyone have a great night, and I'll see you in Azeroth.